All right, guys, hockey is here. Hockey, 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 hockey. Finally, camps are opening up all over the place today and tomorrow. So I wanted to make today's video about the top five camp battles that you can expect to see at Florida Panthers training camp. These are not the only battles, but for me, these are the top five. And before we get started, please make sure you hit that like button. If you're not subscribed, hit subscribe, hit the notification bell so you guys know when I go live. Let's get into it. Now, number five, I basically have Joe Thornton versus everybody. <laughs> now, when, when we signed Joe Thornton, this is what I said. But where? 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 Somebody, tell me. And nothing has really changed my mind since then. I like that we have him. I want him on this team. I'm fine with it. Don't get me wrong. Although in one way, shape, or form or another, he will be blocking one of our prospects. But this is a team that's trying to win a cup. We are definitely in win now mode. So I'm good with it. The thing with Thornton is, why I say it's Thornton versus everybody is simply because you never know what Q is going to do. You never know what our coach is going to do, which is fine. But I, I get a kick out of like how when people say something on Twitter and somebody will come back and say, you're crazy, that's such a bad take or something. And, of course, somebody would have said exactly that, right? If you would have said, Mason Marchman's going to, go, going to be on the top line with Barkoff at some point this season and play, you know, and play a few games up there too. If you would have said that before, Training camp last year, you've been laugh, laughed off of Twitter. They would say, what are you, nuts? Are you Cocoa Puffs? So you never know what a coach is going to do. And with Thornton, obviously I don't expect him on the top line. But nothing would surprise me in terms of where and when and how he's going to be, you know, getting into games and, and having an effect. We don't know what's in Q's mind. Obviously, he was consulted. For all we know, it was his idea to go get him. So I know many of us, you know, we, we've made rosters all up and down. And, you know, Hornquist and, and Thornton, you could easily make a high-quality playoff caliber roster with the players that we have without Hornquist and Thornton. Now, Hornquist, obviously, I expect to make the team. And Thornton, obviously, didn't sign to not make the team. Basically, is he, is he going to be a fourth liner? Is he going to swap with the Chari? Is he just going to be a guy that plays wherever when somebody's injured? What are we looking at, 30 games, 50 games? How many games are we going to get out of this guy? Again, I like that he's on the team. It's going to be real interesting to see what he does. But basically, it's his battle versus everybody else. Now, coming in at number four, I have Deanna Senko and Hepo Niemi against each other versus Vetrano. Now, let me explain. Now, I know Dennis Sinkel is right-handed. Heponami and Vetrano are left-handed, although when I, when I, when I saw um, the CBS Sports roster page, which just was the one that came up with Google first, apparently, according to them, everybody on the team shoots right-handed, which is, I, 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 hadn't, I didn't know that. I didn't know we had no left-handed shots on the team. Hmm. Now, the reason why I say it's Dan Asenko and Hepaniemi versus Vertrano is because those are the guys. We didn't sign Vertrano. He's got this one last year on his deal. We got cap issues coming up here real soon next year. I don't see how we're going to sign him for the money that he would be worth. Not that I want to get rid of Vertrano, but let's be honest, the writing's on the wall. To me, if either one of these kids proves to be completely ready to take over a role in the top nine, basically the third line there, if either one of these two kids proved to be ready, it wouldn't surprise me to see Vertrano traded before the beginning of the season. It also wouldn't surprise me to see him last until the trade deadline, and it wouldn't surprise me to see him last all the way through whatever playoff run. But... At some point, we will have to make the decision whether Hepaniemi or uh, Danisenko are ready to come up and fill a spot, and whether or not we can get assets back, you know, for Vertrano or just let him walk after the season. I'm torn. I, I, everybody loves Frank the Tank. I wish we could pay everybody, but that's not the reality here. Um, honestly, the best case scenario to me would be Danisenko proving to be ready and him getting in and out of the lineup, and then we get maximum value for Vitrano before uh, at the trade deadline. 
and then Deanna Sanko comes in and fills that role just fine. That's that's how I would like it to go, with the obvious exception being somehow we clear enough cap space to, to keep for Toronto, which not likely. Number three, I've got Nadavar versus Kirsted for the for the sixth defensive spot. Okay. In, in no particular order, because I know we all want to make the pairs, but you got Ekblad, Uyghur, Forsling, Gudis, Montour, and then it could be Nodavara, it could be Kirsted, uh, Julesen's an outside possibility, Ludwig looked good, and we still have Kanaten. So, to me, I think the two guys there that have the best chance of getting that 6D spot are Nodavara and Kirsten. The interesting thing was that when I watched the development camp games, like I said, Kirsten did every power play. He was out there at the point, so it seems obvious that the team wants to see that side of him and get a good look. Stu kind of has the feeling that it's going to be Kirsten, and to be honest with you, I wouldn't be surprised if that's the way they went. I think he's got more upside. Now, both of them played really well when Ekblad left until the playoffs came, and then both of them not so great. I think Kirsten's got a little bit more upside, I like his game a little bit better, even though Nadavar is solid and consistent. I think, um, to me, I think Kirsten's going to win that battle, but it's not, it's not a slam dunk. Absolutely not a slam dunk. He's got very minimal experience, and Nadavar has, has a few years on him. So we'll see how that goes. Number two is Anton Lundell versus himself. And the reason why it's versus himself is because it's very, very rare when you've got a guy coming in who's not played any NHL games, and he's damn near markered in to the top nine. You, you, you know, you look across the board, and we have a few in, we have a few guys that we could slot into that three C in case of emergency, right? I mean, if you had to put Hornquist out there or Thornton out there for a game, or, you know, or whatever game or three, it's not going to kill you. They're not long term answers. But we have guys that can play 3C, but in terms of guys on the roster, with the exception of you're not going to put Reinhardt at 3C, you didn't just get him for that. You got him to be on the top line. So with the exception of Reinhardt, there's really nobody on the roster that you look and you say, this is who Lundell's fighting you know, for a job. It's, it's him versus himself. As long as he comes in and looks anything remotely close like he did in the development camp games, which was really good, that's his spot. 3C is his spot until he decides to take 2C away from Sam Bennett, which if things go well, I have a feeling next year one of the camp battles is going to be Lundell versus Sam Bennett for 2C. The last one comes as no surprise, and that is Bobrovsky versus Knight. Now, I'm not going to talk about the development camp games that Knight played. It's just not. It, it was There was no defense being played. So here's the thing. The team, has, the team hasn't said anything. You haven't heard anything from the coaches or anything like that. But I'm going off of an article I read about a month ago where Knight was excited for the open competition at goalie. So my hope, my idea, which was basically send Knight and Bob out there at camp and go, here you go, somebody take the job. Apparently that's what they're going to do. Now, let's face it. I think the, 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 the most... Likely thing is going to be even split one way or another anyway. Whoever's one, whoever's the starter, whoever's 1A, until we get to the playoffs, they're basically, I think, going to play the same amount of games unless somebody runs away with it, which most likely could possibly be night, but you never know. You know, Bobrovsky, Bobrovsky, if you watched my Bobrovsky video during the offseason, I talked about how and when he's coming off a year where he hasn't played a lot of games, the next year he does really, really well. So that's possible that Bobrovsky could find his groove again, but then we have to talk about the playoffs. And I won't get into that now because his camp video, uh, camp battles, right? We all know how I feel about the situation. I would honestly, I just want to see Knight do consistently well and continue to improve. I would prefer to see a situation where both goaltenders are playing at the top of their game and we're splitting games, maybe two or three games for one and then one or two games for the next. Or, you know, I think if everybody's playing equal, you probably see maybe, you know, 
a 60-40 split in favor of Bob simply because of the veteran status. But at some point in the year, we will have to decide, if the goalies haven't decided for us, at some point we'll have to decide who the playoff goalie is, and that needs to be Spencer Knight. But in terms of camp, it's really, really going to be interesting to see how both of these guys respond to the pressure because they're coming at it from completely different angles. Spencer Knight is like, <laughs> I'm in the NHL. This is great. And Bobrovsky is, uh, is, is coming at it from a, a, you know, a respect point of view, so to speak, where he's the respected veteran. He's the guy with all the money. So he's, you know, you've got way different angles of pressure coming at Bob than you do at Spencer Knight. It'll be interesting to see how both guys respond. And I think Knight's going to take the job. I have a feeling that Knight is going to be our game one starter. I, I, and the reason why I say that is that I think that somehow, someway, in my crazy mind, which I can relate to Quenville about, I think he will feel putting Knight in at on the first game, putting him in at starter game one, will actually decrease the possibility of like a goalie controversy later where like it's Bob's job and then Knight took it away versus it's Knight's job but we know Bob's going to play. I think the less controversial thing to do would be start Knight game one and also when you go to put Knight in, in, in the playoffs you can say well he was our game one starter so it's Less controversy there. And I know that that's a stretch a little bit, but at the same point, just like I said at the beginning, you never know what Q's going to do. And, and that's the final thing I'll say. Um, I, the last camp battle, I, those are the top five. The last camp battle, I will say, is, so, is Florida Panthers social media versus the coaches from the extent of camp opens. And so now we will have every day, all day conjecture about the lineups which is fun. That's good. That's fine. But I always get a kick out of watching people um, say that's a terrible take or you're crazy and call people names and everything. And then what? And then that happens. You know what I mean? So be be aware. Be aware. I would love to see just a just a smidgen less less fighting and backstabbing and 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 infighting and all this stuff that goes on. I would like to see just a little bit less. If you'd like to see what it looks like when it gets really, really bad, go venture to Miami Dolphins Twitter. Trust me. For anybody that thinks Florida Panthers Twitter and Facebook to a lesser extent, if you think that those people, if you think we fight, forget about it. Dolphins Twitter is, is Cocoa Puffs wrapped in bacon-wrapped sausages, deep-fried in onion flavored chocolate sauce that's dolphins twitter and that's the end of the video i appreciate all the support camp is here hockey 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 hockey